Call this meeting to order. Um, and we were going to ask Council Lady Wooten to do the invocation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you. We thank you graciously for this day. We understand that our lives and each day is a gift that you give to us. And we're very appreciative for that. We thank you, God, that you have been our good shepherd through all of this. You continue to lead and guide us. You continue to give us peace. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence, even being here tonight, this evening. We thank you, Lord God, that even through all that's going on, God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we pray, Lord God, that as you continue to lead us, that you would help us work together in the spirit of unity to conduct your business for the city of Virginia Beach. We pray, Lord God, that even during the pandemic, God, that we would not fear, Lord God, but we would remember that you are in control and that we would remember, Lord God, that you're the one, Lord God, who has the final say. And we thank you, Lord God, for tonight as we look at the agenda, we pray, Lord God, that you would give us wisdom and guidance. We pray that as we communicate with one another, that we would communicate with clarity, with respect, with civility. And Lord God, we pray that we would make decisions in the best interest of our community for your glory. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Madam Clerk, everybody is present? Yes, sir. Okay, um, I ask for a motion for the certification of the closed session. So moved. Second. Okay. Councilmember Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Bellucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? I'm going to abstain because I wasn't there. Thank you. Councilmember Moss? Aye, but let the record reflect that I abstained from the lane uh, acquisition. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Rouse? Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of 10 to 0, noting Mr. Moss's abstention, you have um, started by the closed session being in accordance with a motion to recess. Move for a uh, motion to, oh, Mr. Moss. And Mr. Stiles, would you prep the necessary letter that I could sign for inclusion in the record, please? A letter would not be required, but if you want one, I can prepare I would, one please. for you. Thanks. Okay. A uh, motion to cer uh, certify the mo uh, minutes of the special session of July 2nd, 2020. So moved. Second. Second. Councilmember Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Bellucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Moss? Aye. Councilmember Rouse? Aye. Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of 11 to 0, you've approved the minutes of July 2nd, 2020, as submitted. And can I get a motion to certify the minutes of the informal and formal session of the July 7th, 2020? So moved. Second. Councilmember Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Bellucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Moss? Aye. Councilmember Rouse? Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of 11 to 0, we've approved the minutes of July 7th, 2020, as, as submitted. Okay, we will proceed to the public hearings on lease of sip, uh, city property. The first one, short term rental lease, 24 spaces at Lynn Haven Municipal Marina to Chicks Marina Properties, LLC. Uh, the first speaker uh, is Joseph DeSorma. Sorry if I'm mispronounce your name and after mr. DeSorma is Alton Gar Gardner welcome councilman uh, I'm one of, I've been in city marina probably longer than anybody else I've been in there over 30 years and we've had parking problems forever and it's always been with the restaurant and I understand they need they need parking but we don't the spots when we go, we, each person, each slip is given 
four spots when we rent our you know when we rent our slips and we pay good money for one we just park in one most of the time and when we have guests we have them park down in these spots where you want to rent to chicks you're not giving us anything in the marina we don't even have a porta potty in there and i just cannot believe that you would do this to the people in the marina uh, we have to fight for our where we park now many times i come down to my boat and you can't get into the spot because other people are in there and they went over to chicks they have makeshift stickers they hang in their windows it's just totally unfair to the people in the marina when i ask people to leave they want to fight with you they they're just totally unruly i, I just don't know what to what to say um I, i'm just not willing to give up my spots or my spot for chicks and that's what you're asking us to do we only have probably one 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 parking spot behind each boat on the big boat side and we have our people park at the other end what are we going to do we're just going to quit using our boats i don't know what and they cop they just copy passes they do anything they want to take your spots I just I, I'm totally against it and I'm also speaking for Ken Johnson and Paul Ewan and they are slips owners also in the marina all right thank you thank you very much Alton Gardner and then after Mr. Gardner is Barbara Messner welcome sir welcome um, I'm also a slip holder there I've been in and out for the past 20 years I had a boat for 10 years I got out a little bit I'm back in there now um at the moment is our there's only 50 slips for your boats in there and there's only 65 parking places which they uh, only allow us four passes per vessel in there and along with that we're also sharing with first responders the ems um the city has a barge they put in every now and then a little tugboat for uh um, for the buoy systems and all of that the fire the police they're all in there also and when they bring in like their emergency equipment all that for a response they bring a fire truck in there and if you start letting all these spaces go they're not going to be able to have a place to go we're us as slip holders we're very limited and you know when i fish i've got 500 pounds of ice going down the boat rods and reels and you know like he's saying it's just very hard getting there sometimes luckily i'll leave early enough in the morning that we don't have to worry about it it's when we get back in the evenings uh, we're running into these problems um and like um also like a lot of the the, the um for higher vessels i've also run out of there commercially for the cape henry launch service and what we do is we actually have the the customers park all the way where they're trying to give up our slips so we don't bother any of the recreational guys that are trying to unload and load their boats and that's you know what the brand is designed for um uh And also, just to inform you that um, what we're paying for, and they're taking away from us over the years, we used to have bathrooms there. We used to have a shower there. Uh, we, security and on-site management, all other marinas that have this, or that many vessels, sit there, have these amenities. So slowly, now they're going to take our parking away from us also. We'd really appreciate if you wouldn't let them do that. Um, if chicks want parking bad enough, they can talk to Bubba. Bubba's over there, the um, Dimitri. He's got a nice spot right next there on Shore Drive that's a block away. They all use this for parking a few boats in there, and they could work the arrangement out. If they're saying they're, they're saying they only want this for their employees, that is not right. We, they're they're caught valley parking their customers in there. They're just um, abusing the privileges. And this has also been said back to me from uh the people over at the boat ramp over i've been talking to them um so i guess then if, if you do decide to let them do it they need to pay more for the spots try to put the rates as virginia beach ocean front does because they've actually they built the marlin club there knowing they didn't have enough parking and now why should the slip holders suffer that's pretty much it it's highly opposed it if you Please help us out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Barbara Messner, and after Ms. Messner is Daniel Legrand. Welcome, Barbara. 
sad that some of the people who like Neptune's Corner you know they were in business I'm talking about people who've been here a long time who've paid their dues and paid a lot of taxes into the city and now no neighborhood safe it used to be just certain neighborhoods that uh, overflow parking if there was enough parking at the oceanfront it, it wouldn't be spread everywhere um, yeah there there used to be thousands of parking spaces. You took away over a thousand um, parking spaces that could have been used for parking shuttles. All these businesses, including hotels, they should, they should buy property somewhere and shuttle their employees. Um, the city shouldn't be taking over uh, property and hurting uh, private businesses. And I want to speak on due process since I have the rare three minutes. Uh, for people who, who don't know, we are Hampton Roads. We're not Coastal Virginia. We're not 757. We haven't had a referendum to vote if we want to change our name. Jim Spore and Debbie Wynn have reinvent Hampton Roads. And that's the illusion of an upscale neighborhood. And as far as the uh, as far as the ads in the paper you know, the due process. Most people don't get the, uh, get the pilot. I think it's dropped down uh, to probably 50,000 at most, and everyone doesn't read the legal things. But this I had enlarged 118%, and it's still tiny, tiny font. You have to use glasses and a magnifying glass. And um, the city logo should be at the, at the top of everything and continued. There's two pages here. I'm glad you have the legal notices, but they should be um, they should be larger. Okay. Um, yeah. There's ads on TV. You're promoting Croatan, which used to be, you know, the only thing you're not promoting is the North End. But we haven't had parking. We've had systematic removal of parking since the 90s. Thank you. Dale Legrand. I'm sorry, he's WebEx. I'm sorry. I apologize, Kevin. Daniel Legrand, if you could pause for three seconds before you begin your comments. He's not on there. No. Uh huh. Are you Jay? Yes, ma'am. Come on up. And then after Mr. Leach is Carl Eason. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Um, thank you. If you don't know me, my name is Jay Leach. I'm a lifelong citizen of the city who has volunteered as a firefighter at the oceanfront from the age of 16 to 22 and has continuously volunteered as an EMT through many of the different billets within our department of EMS to assistant chief for the last 27 years. If it wasn't for this issue, I would have been riding an ambulance as a paramedic today. Um, after 28 years of teaching in the traditional classroom setting, taught political science and econ, I pivoted to teaching about the maritime environment about our southern Chesapeake Bay aboard my first landing charter vessel as well as my patriotic excursion vessels whose home base is the city marina at Lynnhaven. The owners of Chick's Bar, who I consider friends, both Mike and Corey, I know have asked you all to lease 24 parking spaces at the north end for 50 bucks a, a, a pop for six months. Um, I'm a realist. I taught political science for a number of years. I know there's a, there's a deal that can be bartered to minimize the impact for all. I, I have walk, I've seen Mike and Corey walk by and, and seen the, the marina at times empty. Likewise, this afternoon during lunch, Dan Legrand and myself walked over to Chicks and we counted 42 empty parking spaces in the primary parking lot at Chicks. So that can all vary according to the day of the week, the time of day, and we know that on the weekends, 
on Thursday and Friday afternoons, Chick has a, has a higher demand for because they have more clients. We see the, the vehicles backed up. As a charter boat guy, I've talked to some of the others, and I've reached out to both Mike and Corey three times in the last couple of days, and, and it doesn't seem like they want to um, they want to talk. I think a simple solution is if those of us commercial watermen have our clients parking at the end, we have a special pass that hopefully, if a lease agreement is negotiated and comes comes to fruition, that they would honor our clients who are already there. Um, as, as we would honor whatever decision council ends up making with them. Um, I, I know there's going to be a middle ground. I would, would, would love to be part of that negotiating process if that were to, were, were to, were to come through. Um, and ultimately, I'm a veteran's own small businessman, uh, and there, there's other wingman guide services as well. And it's hard to compete with the Goliath cash cow next door, but I'm their neighbor, and, and that's the reason why I volunteer as a paramedic. I believe in neighbor helping neighbor, and if they have a need and they're going to bring in more money for the, for the city and I can help and without my small business being crushed and the other small businesses or the commercial water guys and gals, I, I, you know, I want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker is Carl Eason. And then after Mr. Eason is Mike Gurley. Mayor, members of council, my name is Carl Eason, law firm of Walcott Rivers Gates, and I'm here tonight representing <clears throat> Chicks Marina Properties, LLC. The history of cooperation with the city and this particular restaurant go back a long time. As early as 2014, when there was a need to do renovations there, there was an exchange for parking. The city most recently came in, I believe in 2018, and needed to do extensive bulkhead repairs. And Chicks accorded them a free easement to allow them to do that. So a spirit of cooperation and community involvement has always been present, present with this restaurant owner and as today. I find it a bit uh, ironic that some people show up and go, we use that parking. The gentleman that just spoke has four spaces for his patrons. The complaint he has is that chicks would use these spaces that otherwise would be available for his patrons. That's a balancing test of what the city wishes to do or not do with it. But one thing before coming here, I asked the client to do, go out and photograph that parking lot for me and do it consistently for a period of a number of days. And I have those photographs. Believe me, there's probably nothing more less appealing than a photograph of parking spaces done by a client. But I did that to demonstrate that by and large, the majority of the day, it is open and it is available and there won't be a significant impact. Is there during the Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Of course there is, we've all been there. And we know that what they do to facilitate that is they want to get the employees to the marina site, 24 spaces, and have them park there, not to shuttle in transient visitors to the restaurant. The patrons that do come to the restaurant, they don't cruise around the parking lot like at Walmart waiting for a space to open. They have valet parking to facilitate getting them off the highway so that the neighbors and the adjoining condos aren't impacted. I think that the proposal that's up here is certainly one that's a reasonable proposal. Uh, it says for employee parking only, that can be policed. You can have decals there, and if the decals aren't present, then it's up to the restaurant owner to make sure that it is enforced. As far as the lot itself, many times we get complaints from the adjacent neighbors. There's beer cans, there's trash. This restaurant doesn't sell any beer in cans, but they go out, they clean it up, they show an interest in the community. It is not universally opposed by all nearby. I have an email from Ann Wright. Ann Wright is with the adjacent condominium association, and I'll read that briefly into the record. It's only a couple of paragraphs. Chicks has been using part of the parking for employee parking for the past five years. Twelve of our condo units overlook the parking area, and we have yet to hear a complaint from any of those owners about Chicks employees parking there. We have occasional comments about noisy customers walking home along Vista Circle, but not the employee parking. It's we are the closest multifamily neighbor. Our owners appreciate that Chicks owners do their best to minimize the disturbance. Their wildly popular business creates, and they are responsive to legitimate complaints. The board of the Lesnar Cove Condominium Association has no objection to Chick's use of the marina parking so long as they continue to issue placards for the employees to display and prohibit the public generally. Thank you from very much, sir. Thank you. Appreciate sub it. Submit these to the clerk. Yes. Thank you. Next speaker is Mike Gurley, and after Mr. Gurley is John Ledford.
Welcome. Welcome. Good evening. My name is Mike Gurley. I am a lifelong resident of Virginia Beach, and I have uh, retired from the city of Virginia Beach for 32 years in the fire department. And I have rented a slip at uh, Lynn Haven Marina for, since 2012. I am a commercial fisherman, so I do run a business out of there. But um, the issue I oppose of the parking lease, because you've already leased those parking places. We have a signed lease. I sign a lease every year. I pay $2,400 a year for my slip, and I'm supposed to be given four passes. And there's only 90 slips there for 50 slips with 90 <coughs> parking places. So you got not even two per boat if you had everybody there. So you do the numbers. It's not feasible when the people use it. We're paying for that slip and a year's contract all year long to use that marina when we want to go to our boat. Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, everybody wants to go to their boat. And I understand Chicks wants to have their happy hours and have dinners and people come in. And I've seen over the last couple of years they issue um, parking passes to the employees. Okay, and they're supposed to, they were supposed to park on the east side of the parking lot against the fence. So I, have, I don't have pictures here to, to submit, but I can submit them later. But I've been down there, and I've counted eight number 148 passes because they copied them stick them in the in the windows seven 112 passes nine 17 <coughs> passes they copy them there was 47 cars belonging to chicks parked in there one night i couldn't even get to my boat couldn't even find a parking place in the whole parking lot but the my whole question is is this is what i would ask what is the purpose of parks and rec when they lease that slip to a person that pays for for an annual fee do don't we have rights to have a parking slip there when we want to go to our boat whether it's at midnight friday night or monday morning we're signed to, i'm signed into that contract to go there so you're double leasing a parking place so it's just like on airline you get bumped off an airline because they double book all right and i also as a slip holder would like to see the annual income of what the, the parks and rec brings in from that slip and what the expenses are so we understand as slip holders what the issue is here you look at fifty dollars of parking slip times 24 is not a great amount of money so it's not about money it's about something else but you should be willing to accommodate the people that sign an annual lease to go to their boat to run a business to make more money for the city of virginia beach instead of having an employee park there they can shuttle you go to any big city they have to shuttle their employees in to get them to work it's all part of the business we're paying that contract that's all i say as I, I oppose to it i don't think it should be any thank you very leeway. much leeway thank you very appreciate much appreciate it sean ladford and after mr ladford is beverly ladford and she'll be participating in webex Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Make sure my notes are up here. My name is John Ludford. I'm a small business person here in Virginia Beach, lifelong resident. I've been a tenant of the uh, marina for 18 years. It took me 10 years to get into the marina. I'm um, very happy at the marina. I've known Mike and Corey for about the same time. I um, appreciate Chicks' business. I've done business with him as a commercial fisherman. Um, I just want to hit a couple points, and their time is um, of the essence. Um, to answer to, uh, to the counselor's um, comments about the parking and going by empty slips, the bottom line is we need the parking at the same time. The marina, um, slip holders, and the restaurant, the, the busy times are coincide. So that's where the, the conflict comes from. Um, it, you know, when they're empty, it, it, we need them at the same time. So that, that addresses that particular. Um, didn't know if any of you also knew that the marina charter itself requires commercial slips to be in there. Um, that also allows for federal funds for dredging of Lynn Haven, and you can look that up. Um, what this does is a lot of benefits that the marina brings to the city. Ecotourism, that's what I do. I do farm-to-table experiences. I do farming, aquaculture. The city promotes this. This ad was paid for by the state of Virginia, but then also was used by the city. You've probably seen it in a few places in city buildings. Um, what, I, what I'm asking for is... Um, you know, maybe even a little bit more notice. The first notice, the only notice in the paper was July 5th, July 4th weekend. I was pointed out to me just a few days ago. Never even knew it was in there. Uh, no work group, no invitation to parlay or talk or have any kind of a discussion, you know, and, and move forward with this. Um, 
it really was not um, timely. Um, you know, the, the previous years when they parked, there was absolutely no hearings, no public hearings. None of this happened last year. Um, I'm not sure how that all came to be, but I'm really thankful that we're doing this process this time. I really appreciate the city doing at least this process. I would love to see it expanded to, um, again, maybe a little bit more notice of public hearing and more time given for involvement from the neighborhood um, and other businesses. I, I was always, I'm also curious if other businesses were allowed to bid as well. Perhaps you could have gotten more money than the $50 a slip. Um, I'm not sure if other businesses on Shore Drive, as one of the other speakers pointed out, would be able to bring their employees or patrons in. Um, what I, I'm just curious is what gives this particular business priority um, to, to this lease uh, agreement. Um, in closing, I appreciate the time. Um, you know, I want to reiterate as well, maybe we could look at a discount for our slips. We've been five years without restrooms. Our rates are based on comparable marinas with comparable amenities, which we do not have. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. I'm available for questions anytime. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. the, ne the next speaker is by WebEx, Beverly Ludford. Ms. Ludford, if you would pause three seconds before beginning your comments. My name is Beverly Ludford and I live at 4425 Delmar Drive in Virginia Beach. I'm a commercial waterman and a slip holder at the City Marina for over a decade. I'm here to speak against leasing parking at the City Marina to anyone other than the slip holders who already have a lease. I spoke to the city manager, council members and city staff two years ago about my concerns regarding the parking lot utilization by Chick's Restaurant. I documented photographs, dates, and times of the parking lot, the overcrowding caused by the questionable arrangement, and expressed my concerns about access to my boat. I have to go down with coolers filled with ice and equipment to plant, grow, and harvest oysters on my farm in the Lynn Haven. The farm is used to produce oysters for local restaurants, educational opportunities for public and private school students, and environmental responsibility and for oyster tours as part of the governor's oyster trail established several years ago. The economic and environmental benefits of a commercial waterman who utilized the city marina does not need explanation. Just this morning, as I went out to do husbandry on the farm, I witnessed two fishing charter trips being loaded with excited tourists spending money in Virginia Beach. They're not going to be very excited if they don't have a place to park. Although I have been part of a planning process for working waterfronts in the past, the sparse resources for commercial fishermen in Virginia Beach is abominable. The 50 slip leasees need their parking space for their activities associated with their boats there. Parking for the personnel providing a search and rescue responsibilities, the public safety boats that are there is also of concern. Adequate parking is critical to their um, vessel's swift departure. Minutes mean lives. More than several times, I have been blocked from entry to the parking area by e entry or egress of vehicles being parked by Chick staff and or customers. I also believe if the city is leasing parking to one restaurant, it'll open up a Pandora's box, which should include a bidding process and open to all restaurants and businesses within close proximity to any city parking area, not just at this site, but at other areas such as the oceanfront. This seems to me an inappropriate liability and potential litigation issue. There is so much more I could share, like the trash left for us to pick up, the risky behaviors of those who are leaving the parking area after drinking alcohol, vandalism of boat equipment and supplies, which has increased with this arrangement, and the always present abuse of the space agreement. But my time is up. Please do not lease. The next speaker is by WebEx, Dale Legrand. So he didn't register. I mean, he didn't log into that. Sorry. So that's all the speakers, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. And thank you for your input. I really appreciate it. Um, the next item under lease of city property is uh, 2200 Parks, uh, Parks Avenue. 
to the uh, Virginia Museum of uh, Contemporary Art, MOCA. We have one speaker, Barbara Messner. Good evening. Um, Parks Avenue, uh, MOCA, uh, was originally the Virginia Beach Art Center on Pacific Avenue. It was next to the Dome. This used to be a sleepy beach town. It was very family friendly. There was parking, free parking uh, almost year round. There's parking for everyone. This ties in with parking. And uh, the Art Center is taxpayer subsidized. Uh, Ex-city manager Jim Spore, who I mentioned earlier, his wife Joan has been on the board since the 90s. And <coughs> the Boardwalk Art Show used to be a wonderful event, but a lot of the well-known artists, local artists, moved to other areas because it got too expensive. Everything is commercial. You know, every, the price of everything goes up. And um, with all these expansions and I don't know why the, you know, the city shouldn't be leasing property to, uh, to all these entities. We have limited space for entry, exit, and for parking. Parking is huge. Um, and I'm trying to see where the picture is. Yeah, this is the, the city logo for most of, many of y'all who've been on council for a while. When we paid our property tax, we had a city decal, and uh, that went in our window. And that goes inside the window, so they can't be, you know, stolen and scraped off. You know, I'm more than willing to pay a dollar to have a city sticker, and then we'll have an actual count of how many people, you know, live in the city, and, um, you know, how many, you know, overflow people are from outside the area, especially during the pandemic, which is <coughs> on, off, on, off. Um, and, you know, all these things are um, tourist related, but the, the money doesn't uh, lower air taxes. It goes back into tourism. And that huge sign he held up, the state and the city advertised tourism, and you just increased it by two million. Anybody who watches Cox, sees the ads all the time. So I oppose leasing of city property. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the speakers, sir. Okay, uh, thank you. I'm moving on. I'm gonna uh, talk about the uh, speaker policy here. I want to remind everyone that the city council speaker policy that allows certain representative of groups to speak for 10 minutes applies only to planning items. All other speakers, whether they're speaking individually or on behalf of a group, will have three minutes to speak. Speakers are reminded that comments during the formal portion of the meeting must be limited to the subject of the item that is being considered by the council at the time you are called. When speakers are called on each item, the clerk, uh, the clerk will call for those individuals who have signed up to speak. <coughs> After those who have signed up to speak have spoken, the chair will ask if there are any other persons who wish to speak on the item at hand. Those speakers will be allowed to speak and will be asked to give their name, address, telephone number for the clerk to record. We have several items with only one speaker signed up as such. The city clerk will call the speaker and identify each item that have, they have registered on. The speaker will receive three minutes to comment on each item. Again, the speaker must limit his or her comments to the subject matter of the items they have signed up to address. Finally, I call upon all speakers and all persons in the chamber to be civil in their discussion and decorum. Whatever views you hold and wish to express, the City Council wants to hear from you and ensure that all viewpoints and all persons are respected. The best way for us to do this is to strive for civility and respect. Okay, Madam Clerk, uh, do we have uh, uh, se uh, several one ish and uh, issue items coming forward. Yes, uh, Barbara Messner, if you'd like to come up. 
The first item is ordinance number one. Um, Timothy Hanlon, uh, conditional, and it, it, if these get, this is for the ordinances. No, this is under oh, ordinances. ordinances. Oh, okay, Esther. sorry, I brought it. Okay. Um, sometimes y'all move it up, so thank you. One, accept and appropriate, appropriate. Um, 30,000 from Cities of Financial Empowerment Fund, Inc. This is from the 2020-21 uh, uh, budget that was already approved months ago. Um, this is for Recreation Operating Budget Reference Virtual Financial Empowerment Classes. Um, the city shouldn't be altering the budget and everything virtual. Uh, we have less people work, most people are working from home and anybody who watched part, I watched part of the um, informal when the health department director, you know, she didn't know how to use, um, you know, I think it took like five or 10 minutes before she was able to speak. Um, so, you know, having all this virtual stuff is really a challenge, and I think there's ways that we can have the meeting at larger places so, uh, so we don't have to keep spending money that we don't have because we have a $3 billion um, debt. Okay? Next item is 2A, ordinance appropriate funds to the clerk of circuit court regarding technology-related right. expenses. Okay, 638952 from uh, 2020-2021, the budget that's already passed, for the Clerk of the Circuit Court Operating Budget Ray Technology Related Expenses. That is a huge, huge amount, uh, 630, almost $640,000. Um, and, you know, like I said, a lot of people are working from home and these are huge, huge expenses. Um, okay. Next item is to be $2 million to human services regarding taxpayer relief programs. Right. Um, before I do this, so I don't forget, I want to thank all the police officers <clears throat> who protected us you know, trying to come in the building and for everything they do. I really appreciate their hard work. And I wish the permits weren't given to some of these people. Um, anyway, um, two million 2021 budget that was approved this past spring, Human Services Operating Budget Reference Taxpayer Relief Program. The city can't be picking and choosing uh, to give tax relief to some people. All of us need tax relief. You shouldn't be taxing us on food, water, Cox Cable, et cetera, et cetera, city and state taxes. Um, yeah, people shouldn't be, I mean, there's just too much money being shifted around with this pandemic. And, you know, a lot of people don't even know about this that might need it more than other people. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm opening a public hearing on planning. Ms. Messner, you have signed up on several planning items. You're the only one. So the first one is J4, Mary White for conditional use permit at 8006 Atlantic Avenue. So you're going back to J1? No, ma'am. Four. Okay. Mary White for a short term rental. Okay. And two things. One, um, on the short-term rentals, I contacted one of the planning administrators. I've spoken to several planning administrators. 
And Mr. Alcarez, um, when I watch planning, he even has problems with short-term rentals where he lives. He moved from Croatan. And when I spoke to him, I asked him uh, information, and I followed up with a letter, but I haven't had a chance to, uh, to get a reply from him. That was July 9th. And I'm going to hand this to Ms. Barnes afterwards so it can be made part of the record. And this is, you know, I oppose all the short-term rentals. And Ms. Henley, your, your, your comments are excellent. You know, it's just appalling that other people still want to have short-term rentals with all of the information that you've given. And I think it would be great for your speech today, everything that you've said, to be on a video so people can see it on the city's website. And um, because it is a public safety issue, and you said that we don't have the police and we don't have the manpower. and. You know, these places, you know, it's supposed to be residential. Okay, this one is um, 629 Surfside Avenue. This is just an example because this shouldn't come before you when the people are, are, are already renting it. And the sign is, is way back here. It's behind these trees. This is the top picture. It's behind those trees. You know, I had to park my car, and I talked to several neighbors who, you know, don't want to, you know, this person is an ex-football player who doesn't even live here, and he's already renting it. He puts the sign back here behind the trees. Even with the picture I took in getting out of my car, you can't read it. That's, that's a, those are both violations. So this happens with a lot of these. Um, And I'm still waiting for someone. Uh, we're supposed to have the crime stats for 2019, and they still aren't posted. And so that would really help us know where the crime is in all the neighborhoods. Okay. Did you want me to do another one or just a? Uh, the next one is number 5, 3300 Arctic Avenue, LLC, for a short term rental at 3300 Arctic Avenue. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 33, 33rd and Arctic, that's, that's close to where the post office is and a lot of the breweries. Um, parking and traffic is a nightmare because um, I, I go there, you know, all the time and uh, we shouldn't be approving these, Ms. Henley said. How can you approve something if you do not have uh, the ability to enforce it and you have people calling 311 and then three or, you know, calling people who don't even live in these places? I don't know uh, who the applicant is on this one. It doesn't, it doesn't say the person's name. It just says Arctic Avenue LLC. You know, the name should be here for each one. Okay. The next one is number six, Her Hersat Law for short-term rental at 716 16th Street, Unit A. Right. Okay, this is, this is the Beach District, Mr. Tower. <clears throat> um, there's so many at the beach. It's, you know, the traffic, you know, there was, uh, there's horrible car accidents on Pacific Avenue all the time. People drive crazy down there. I, when I get the stats, I would love to also, Mr. Leahy, if you could, uh, you know, give the stats on how many, um, you know, speed traps there are. People drive crazy, and, you know, I don't know how that person was killed. I think it was 69th Street. But people drive crazy down here, and, you know, traffic, parking are issues, and not knowing who's coming and going. Uh, you know, why should we be punished, you know, because there's, um, you know, the pandemic goes up and down when the beaches have never, there's been no, uh, no enforcement 
of how many people come to the beach and whether or not they wear a mask or whatever, you know, it, it changes minute to minute, hour to hour. Um, so I'm opposed. There's too many. And, you know, most of the owners, it's investment property. And that, that's all they care about, investment. And there, it takes away affordable housing for people who, who live here. Even um, Armada Hoffler, you know, I think they're turning the second hotel that they wanted into apartments or condos. And the same thing for um, the Cavalier. You know, they, they were supposed to save the Cavalier on the hill. They destroyed the hill. And they had, I think, 85 residents. And it's, you know, private. You know, it's a gated community, and he has two floors of hard liquor distillery. So I think a lot of people are drinking too much and driving crazy, and it's a, a public safety issue. Okay, are there any others? Uh, yes, 7A through D, Poochie LLC, mm -hmm. short-term short rental, 208 27th Street. Right. Um... Yeah, 27th Street, that's the same street uh, as the uh, as the Hyatt, which is one of the ugly, excuse me, I won't say that. Thank you, Mr. Dyer, I won't say what I think of some of the architecture that we've lost and some that's replacing it. Um, but this is four units and You know, 27th Street, there's 200 block, that's, you know, high traffic, and it's Old Beach. O Old Beach, you know, it's not Old Beach, it's the resort beach. It's just renamed like everything else. Um, but every time you cut off traffic, for some people, it goes somewhere else. You just move the problem somewhere else, including crime. Um, so, you know, I know y'all don't ask me questions, but I think you should have asked those gentlemen, you know, the, over there by Chicks Marina. I think you should have had a dialogue with them because they took the time to come here. Okay, so I'm in opposition for all the reasons I've stated and Miss Henley stated. Okay. You ready for the next item? Uh, J8 eight. is BB Vibe LLC, short term rental at 1728 Baltic Avenue. Right. 17th and Baltic, yeah, the Vibe District taxpayer subsidized Vibe, moving, you know, the commercialization from the from Atlantic Avenue all the way back almost to Birdneck Avenue, and painting uh, painting the bricks, the streets, the fences, you know, I think a little bit of art goes a long way. And art should be inside, and art is in the eye of the beholder. But, like I said, the Vibe District gets city and state subsidies, and it's not the city's job or to use air money to, for select private businesses. Okay? The next item is a J9, 21st Development LLC, for short-term rental at 417. 21st Street. 21st Street, yes. 21st Street is the expressway. Expressway in and 22nd is expressway out. Um, yeah, like, I oppose this because of parking and traffic and, uh, you know, one development. You know, I didn't have time to look up who the specific person is, but it, they... They file a corporation and they, they invest, they buy up this property, just like Atkinson did at the North End, summer, winter, but that was just the North End. Now it's every neighborhood is, you know, has to deal with total strangers. And the, the picture I held up in Croatan, that's four bedrooms. Now I think the short-term rental is supposed to be two and it shouldn't be, um, you know, twice a week to have strangers coming in twice a week. So 417, 419, 417, 
and a half. Um, I believe I forget who mentioned about the half streets. Since I lived at 24th Street, I know that there's a, you know, all these half streets, alleyways, and the more you build up and make these things larger, the more flooding you have and the more traffic problems you have overflow parking. So I'm opposed and I wish more people would take it seriously because any problems we have, you're all responsible for. And, and I think uh, it needs to be mentioned when you vote on these, that there's not supposed to be any events held there. Mr. Tower, you uh, used to read that for Mr. Bellucci and for yourself. So I think it's important that, uh, oh, I know what I, I thought of, because there are a lot of these, Mr. Alcarez, his problems were from somebody that wasn't even registered. I think it would be great, a great suggestion for everyone that is renting a property to have a sign outside showing who's renting it and a contact person so all the neighbors and everyone knows that that is a, a short-term rental. I think that's only fair to everyone. And Mr. Tehan, you know, I hope you have the stats that you didn't have before so we know how many uh, short-term rentals there are in the city. Okay. Is that it? The next item is number 10, Ocean Rental Properties, okay. 607, 609, and 611 20th Street. Okay. More short-term short -term rentals, 20th Street. Um, yeah, there isn't enough parking. Anyone who, I think the Miller Group built some of these on the expressway. They look like row houses in, um, in San Francisco. They're high density. There's no trees, you know, uh, and some of them don't have parking. So they park on the street. And, you know, it just limits the access for everyone else that wants to come to the beach. And since I'm not allowed to speak on appointments, um, just want to make sure when I talked about the city logo up there, um, just want to remind everybody to stop corporate welfare selective um, funding and relocate. If we're going to talk about statues on the 23rd, I also found out that it's limited to 200 people. It's only from 6 to 8 o'clock on the 20th and the 23rd. And I wish Ms. Henley could change her, the time for her meeting so she could attend because the statues, you will, on time. Uh, thank you. Okay, so uh, if we're going to relocate statues, they should all go, including the one on 13th Street where the street was closed. You have so many closed streets. You close streets for entertainment. We need access. Um, so stop corporate welfare. Relocate the king of nepotism to the bottom of the sea. I, I oppose all the, the parties, the kings, the tritons, and, you know, people dressing up um, and having parties for months. Anyway, I want the beach to be given back to the people who live here. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Vice Mayor, the uh, consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, under... Um, Ordinances resolution, or I moved the following items under ordinances resolutions. Ordinance to accept and appropriate $30,000 from the Cities of Financial Empowerment Fund, incorporated to FY 2021 Parks and Recreation Operating Budget Ray Virtual Financial Empowerment Classes. Item two, ordinance to appropriate A, $638,952 to the FY 2021 Clerk of Circuit Court Operating Budget Ray Technology Related Expenses. B, Two million dollars to FY 2021 Human Services Operating Budget Rate Taxpayer Relief Programs. I open a public hearing on planning. Item four: Mary White for conditional use permit rate short-term rental at 8006 Atlantic Avenue in the Linhaven District, noting that Mr. Moss, <coughs> Ms. Henley, and Mr. Jones are voting nay. Item five: 3300 Arctic Avenue LLC for conditional use permit rate short-term rental at 3300 Arctic Avenue in the Beach District, noting that Mr. Moss, Ms. Henley, and Mr. Jones are voting nay. Item six, Harshoot Dua for a conditional use permit 
for a short-term rental at 716 16th Street, Unit A in the Beach District, noting that Mr. Moss, Ms. Henley, and Mr. Jones are voting nay. Item 7, Pucci LLC for conditional use permit ray short-term rentals at 208 27th Street, A, Unit 201, B, Unit 202, C, Unit 203, D, Unit 204, noting that Mr. Moss, Ms. Henley, and Mr. Jones are voting nay. 8, VB Vibe LLC for conditional use permit ray short-term rental at 1728 Baltic Avenue in the Beach District, noticing, noting that Ms. Mr. Moss, Ms. Henley, and Mr. Jones are voting nay. Item 9, 21st Development LLC for conditional use permit short-term rentals at A, 417 21st Street, B, 419 21st Street, C, 417 21st and a half Street, D, 419 21st and a half Street in the Beach District, noting that Mr. Jones, Ms. Henley, Mr. Moss are voting nay. Item 10, Ocean Rental Properties LLC <coughs> for short-term rentals at A, 607 20th Street, B, 609 20th Street, C, 11, 611 20th Street in the Beach District, noting that Mr. Jones, Ms. Henley, and Mr. Moss are voting nay. So move, Mr. Mayor. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, good. you can uh, hold the body, please. Uh, Councilmember Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Bellucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Moss? Aye. Councilmember Rouse? Aye. Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of 11 to 0, you approve the consent agenda as read by Vice Mayor Wood. Okay, I'm going to call the uh, first planning item, and that is planning item J1, which is temp, uh, Timothy Hanlon for conditional use permit, raise short term rental at 4504 Ocean View, District 4, Bayside. Okay. Is the applicant online? Timothy Hanlon is the applicant, and he registered via WebEx. But I understand he's not showing up. He's not. Okay, Mr. Moss. Mr. Moss, while we're waiting for him to get up, I just wanted to make There's two clarifications here, okay, okay, for the viewing public that on that first item, we weren't changing the budget. We were accepting a grant for financial literacy for young people. So I want people to know what that was about. We weren't no new taxes. We were accepting a grant. And on the investment for the courts, that's money that's previously been collected from user fees, and it's to improve the productivity and technology baseline of the circuit. Court, so we weren't making changes to the budget and we weren't raising any fees. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Okay. Sierra Alderman. Uh, Mr. Hanlon is on a military training, so okay. he wasn't able to do the WebEx, so he gave me um, something that he typed up, if it's okay to talk on his behalf. Do I have three minutes or ten minutes? Three. 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 Okay, I'll try to talk fast. Um, this is from him. So, Council, thank you for considering my property for short-term rental. Last week, unfortunately, there was some confusion as to which property was mine, and it led to a deferral. I want to clear the air on a few things that were said during this uh, confusion that were incorrect. First, there is absolutely no issue <clears throat> with public traffic as it pertains to the parking of my guests. My driveway is a very large driveway that can fit seven cars if you include the garage, which is more than adequate for a three-bedroom home. This size driveway is unprecedented in, in the Chicks Beach area and will allow my guests to properly park at the house without affecting the public roadways whatsoever. As I read this, I hope you will pull up the street view of my place so you can visualize how truly large it is. My driveway is the right half of this picture. Second, the neighbor who I share a roof with has no objections to my application. In fact, they even had me, so, uh, me co-sign my application when I first submitted it to the city because we share a roof. This week, he also assigned a letter of recommendation for my application, which should have been provided to you prior to this meeting. I emailed it to a couple different places, but I also have it here in my hand um, if you don't have it. Um, I understand the short-term rental topic is a point of debate for the city, but I think those people who are following the proper procedures and actually submitting an application to the city should be applauded. I know there must be hundreds of people who have heard how long and arduous the process is and have simply chosen to rent their place off the record. This is something I highly doubt the city can enforce due to, due to the sheer vo volume of properties. This prevents the city from gaining valuable tax revenue from these properties and also prevents you from being able to stop the applications that don't actually warrant approval. If more and more people find out the applications are being stopped, even when the properties meet the criteria, the problem will only get worse because no one will want to go through the process that can be so subjective. For my application, I have dotted every I and crossed every T and done everything by the book the city has asked. 
just last month we submitted a check for over $1,000 to the city for one month of taxes, and my initial application cost of $350. My application should not be blocked as I meet all of the criteria. In closing, I would like to say this. I signed up to fight for this country because I believe in freedom. I believe our freedoms are what make America so special. With that freedom, I have the right to pursue my own version of the American dream, and no city official or government organization should be able to prevent that, as long as it does not adversely affect the greater good of society. I respectfully request the council to vote aye on my application so I can allow families and guests to enjoy our wonderful Chick Beach and all of Virginia Beach has to offer. Thank you very much for your consideration and for your service to the city. Very respectfully, Lieutenant Tim Hanlon. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Are you one of the owners of the property? I am not. I help him. I co-host. I help him manage the property. Um, what did you say? I, I help him manage the property. I am not one of the owners. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Barbara Messner. She just said the magic word, how much money the city makes. If only, you know, the city had listened to the Sandbridge people and not looked at the dollar signs. Um, I was married to somebody in the military. You know, I helped serve my country. But that doesn't mean you can buy something and use it for an investment property while you're flying around or wherever you work. Every job matters. Everyone is essential. And just because you dot the T's and pay the bills doesn't mean that there's, if there's problems, you know, if she, if she gets called, if she's there 24 seven, and it's a huge problem like the one Mr. Alcarez uh, had, no matter how you vet people, you have no idea who's gonna actually rent the property. Just like people can, you know, make fake stickers um, people can have somebody else sign up for them and it's not the, the person. There's been people that have rented out properties they didn't even own. Uh, in the beach, in the middle beach area. Um, like I said, um, Chicks Beach is, you know, at one time I lived in a really small duplex very family oriented now all those places are torn down it's huge duplexes huge places on the ocean um so you know these people can get their their money back if we if we can't assure public safety for everyone and they can wait you know a lot of us you know the people who spoke about the problems at uh at chicks beach you know they've been you know, they weren't aware of these problems in time to, to speak, so um, y'all usually do what you want, or it's the, you know, 7-3 supermajority vote, but everyone is responsible. And I forgot to give this to Ms. Um, Barnes, so I'll take it over this way. Just pass it, Ms. Master, and I'll, Ms. Master, if you'll pass it to the... That's all the speaker sir. Okay, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, w I deferred this uh, item last week uh, because I wanted to go out and look at the property and uh, because, frankly, I was mistaken about the, the location of it. Uh, and uh, thanks to Mr. Dahan, he pointed that out to me. I went out there. There's no sign in front of the property, for one thing, uh, advertising to the community that, uh, uh, that's required. Uh, but more importantly, what my concern about this is something that was demonstrated, quite frankly, to us last week here in the council meeting. and when we had the gentleman who came up and uh, was complaining about his friend and his neighbor who uh, is renting his house as a short-term rental 
and had 200 people show up and written the house next door to him, and he couldn't control it. And there was no response uh, uh, by anybody because the owner wasn't there, and, and uh, so there was nothing anybody could do about it but put up with the noise. Uh, that's my concern about these rentals, these short-term rentals in residential neighborhoods that are just that, single-family residential homes or single-family duplexes. And what we're dealing with here is the issue of whether or not we're going to allow our residential communities to be turned into businesses. That's what we're dealing with. And uh, in this case, this is a residential community. We do have, I think, four people who objected at the Planning Commission uh, to this application. Uh, I went out to the community and I talked to people in the community. They don't want short-term rentals in their community. They're clear about that. And this is this, to get, to grant this short-term rental would just be the beginning of a continuation of that type of thing <coughs> being proposed in this area. And uh, the fact that the community objects to it, the fact that it's uh, owned by somebody who is out of town, who I know we have a real estate lady who says she's handling the property. But the truth of the matter is, our experience has been that the real estate people don't respond. At least they don't respond timely. And so the essence of it is that when the owner of the property is not here locally, does not have the uh, opportunity and cannot get there to respond in a timely fashion to meet the requirements of the code as was adopted, and the fact that the community itself does not want their 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 area turned into a business. I'm going to make a motion to, to deny it. I'll, okay, do I, do I have I'll, a second? Then we go to discussion. Second. I'd like to make a statement with go my right ahead. if I could. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm happy to the second of my, Mr. Jones, my good colleague and, and neighbor. But I want to get to, to expand the votes, I want to get to the back to the uh, issue that might get some people who generally are on the take a different view about what people are entitled to because they followed the process. Because we heard a lot about process today, so I want to narrow down to the narrow point of whether or not the application before us has met the legal requirements to receive a favorable judgment only about the notice of the sign. So I'd like, maybe I don't know if the city attorney or the planning department director, but can comment on the fact that the sign at the property is not pro properly signage and notifications not on the property, which I will take Councilman Jones's word that it's not, <coughs> then how is how did they meet the requirements to be favorably considered by this body, independent of all the conditions that they've agreed to? So if you could come forward, please, and talk with us about notification requirements and sign postage and the obligations of the property holder. Yes, sir, Mr. Moss. Thank you. Uh, the staff is, was not aware that the sign was down. Uh, the uh, city code, uh, the zoning ordinance as well as the state code requires us to mail adjacent property owners, which was done uh, for the last meeting. And because it was continued to a date certain, there wasn't a, a, an additional mailing that was required. But we were not aware that the sign was down. And then that's However, the code does say that those, uh, as long as people are, are notified and aware, and Mr. Stiles can uh, interject in this one, as long as they're made note and aware of the application, um, 
the council can determine whether it meets the posting requirements or not. Do we send those letters by certified mail? Uh, I believe we send it by first, just first class regular so mail. So you can't attest to the fact, just like people can't get a ticket for their first offense for notification that they, their lives life is expended because they, you, we can't establish in a court of law that they've actually been notified by first class mail. Isn't that not correct? We do have a manifesto from our third party vendor that shows that they've mailed it appropriately. Uh, the state code doesn't require us to have certified mail to. I didn't, I didn't say, but we can't attest that the person actually got the notification. Uh, that is correct. Okay, I just want to make sure that that's, that's the same issue we face with uh, people driving with suspended license. They get it notified in the mail. Well, you're stopped the second time, you get qualified for both notices, but you aren't. It's treated as the first notice. I just want to make sure that people understand that we know they've been mailed. We can't attest that they actually have been notified, so we just need to make that statement clear. But that doesn't constitute notification. It might mean legal notification. But lots of things are legal, but doesn't mean that people know. I just want to make sure we don't. You said that they got notified. No, they were mailed. They received a the mailing. Yes, sir. Okay, I just want to make sure that's clear. So the fact that we've mailed that obviates the need for the person to maintain the sign publicly on their property. Is that correct? Mr. Moss, the, the, your ordinance says that if the sign was not posted and the council determines that the, that the notice provisions have not been met, that the matter shall be deferred. So that is not a basis for denial. However, the code also goes on to say that the council may determine to deny it for other independent reasons. I understand. I'm just trying to make sure that because that comment, I know we've been down this sign road before, but it definitely means that best they're only entitled to deferral if there are other reasons to deny by our current policy. Well, there's a factual determination to be made as to whether or not it was posted through the hearing last week because you deferred it to a date certain. So um, I, I don't know. I don't know the facts, and they've not been presented to you, but yes. Well, my only point is I think often the benefit of the doubt should go to the neighborhood because we're changing the status quo, and generally speaking, in discussions, the benefit absent and to the contrary always should benefit the status quo and not granting a new entitlement. I'm just trying to understand how we, because this is going to continually come up. So this is definitely a weakness in our process. And I think I asked before about what the requirements are, and it's the applicant's responsibility to maintain the sign being up. But clearly, I think, to my peers, we need to go back and, and, and we buff so, it's, so we remove the ambiguity that exists here so that this doesn't continue to happen. Your agenda is outside. And I, just, and I just want to make sure that we don't continually have this sign issue because we had a big discussion on this on another application not too long ago about was the sign up, was the sign not up, you know, how long had it not been up, you know, how have people been notified or not, and is it, you know, is it just the property owners that need to be notified? But the sign's supposed to serve the general public as well, not just the adjacent property owners. So I have a lot of issues with, you know, that about when the sign, does that mean I have to go out there and have a continually go by every day and inspect to make sure their sign's up? You know, I don't think the public should have to bear that. And if it's not up one day, then it's not up. And it's, you know, it's like the benefit of the doubt should go to the community in compliance rather than benefit of the doubt going to the person asking for a change. But I've got my answer. And, and it's just something we'll have to work on because it's it gets exhausting to constantly have to deal with the ambiguity which we should be able to clear up and I'll look forward to working on that thank you mr. Rouse thank you mr. mayor uh, mr. Tahan does the uh, applicant live is this the applicant's main address does he live here yes sir the applicant testified that this was his address and he wanted to rent it out last week uh, he had stated that he wanted to rent it out um, while he was uh, on deployment or other things like that. Okay. And while he's uh, serving our country, he has a responsive, the young lady, what, what was your name again? Uh, Sierra. And you are the one responsible if something goes, uh, happens at this property? And how far in this vicinity or do you live close to this property? Ten minutes away. You don't have to get up. I think I heard you. You're 10 minutes away, though. All right, 10 minutes away. Um, 
to this council, I would move, I understand, you know, preservation of our communities is utmost importance, um, but we do have an ordinance um, that's in place for short-term rentals. And while I'm afraid we are going to push those who would come before this council following um, dotting every I, crossing every T to make sure they are within um, the, the guidelines of this council, um, I'm afraid we're going to push them to not even come before this council. I mean, we already lack, as Councilwoman Henley stated and so many others, we lack enforcement. So if we lack enforcement already and we're collecting a check from the taxes we, we generate from these properties, what's to stop those from um, going on and continuing uh, renting their properties and not uh, the city not gaining anything from it since we already lack enforcement anyway? Um, I, I really think, you know, we ought not to push uh, people into a corner. And I think we have a lot of work to do to continuously uh, make this ordinance, strengthen this ordinance guidelines and the restrictions and make it better. But as of right now, when you have someone that comes before this council um, doing everything that we have, we asked of them, I think it would be uh, best for us to uh, approve it. Thank you. Mr. Bellucci. I don't have a photo of it. However, the the four that spoke in opposition did note notice uh, the sign that was there. So there was a sign at one point in time. I don't know when it when it came down. The reason I ask is because I received an email in March, um, and this is when, the, from what I understand, this application was going through planning from a neighbor who was concerned about the application. And I have an image of this um, property that where there is no sign, and I sent that to Mr. Jones just as a point of reference on March 14th of 2020. So there wasn't a sign that I'm aware of in March, and there still isn't a sign. I, I, I will tell you I don't know when the sign came down. The, this was heard on March 11th. There was some confusion with staff, and we believe we told all the applicants to make sure they repost all their signs. Uh, but this was heard prior to that. I think there was a point when staff told people to take the signs down to avoid confusion, which has caused, caused additional confusion, unfortunately, because we were trying to be proactive. So I cannot attest to when, when or if the sign was reposted. So, okay, thank you. Mr. Tower. Just to clarify, the, the four people appeared at the Planning Commission to oppose this, correct? Yes, that's correct. And, and how did they learn of the hearing? I'll have to double check that, they John. Were, I'm sorry. I think they were. I can probably answer that for you. You're, you asked Mr. Tahan, but I can probably sure. answer that for you. Uh, the four people who appeared at the Planning Commission are people in the community who are trying to preserve their community, and they're particularly in interested in <coughs> these short term rentals proposals in the community and uh, they are uh, uh, from bo both the uh, uh, the Chicks Beach area as well as the Bay Lake Pines but that doesn't answer my real question was how did they did, how did they find out about the hearing how they're they watching know? what goes on in the city they're they're watching the applications on short-term rentals in particular but not necessarily seeing a sign. I thought, I thought, okay. Okay. Uh, I, I just, I'm constrained to make one, one comment, which I've made before, I do. I, 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 I believe I am as concerned as anyone in this room with short-term rentals, including the safety of this. Henley, you make very, very good points about the safety of them, but so far to date, I'm the only one that seems to be doing anything about it in terms of referring something to the Planning Commission, and I hope, I appreciate the support I got for doing that, but we need to get our in gear, as Mr. Rouse suggests, and be ready to take this on when it comes back from the Planning Commission and fix this thing so that we do not spend our time and require and, and dis create disincentives for people to comply with the law. I will say in terms of enforcement, this new tool of, of picking up the advertising is extremely useful. 
we have not had that before, but now we know, and people that rent these out can't rent them out unless they advertise. That's how they get people in them. And if we can pick those up, we have much better ability than we've ever had before to, to enforce them. Still takes some human effort. It doesn't happen by itself. But I will point that out is that we do have better tools now. But I'm open to, uh, as, as you say, in the, be in the old Beach District, I suggested they be limited to people whose principal residence is there. This is the principal residence of this guy, so I'm kind of sympathetic to this particular one. But I just am looking for a way to find, to deal with these in a more efficient and fair manner. I don't find it in good conscience that I can vote either to defer these indefinitely or to deny them in a blanket sort of way when they have complied with an ordinance that this council has adopted, made public, and put out there to comply. We can probably find, if we're looking for them, uh, sign violations or some other, what I consider to be relatively minor, unless we, we found four, this one we're talking about had four op opponents at the, at the hearing, so somebody got the word somehow on these. But I think we need to change the ordinance, and I think, I know, I, I, I don't, relish the idea of having to dig in and get it done, but I think we do in order to keep going. I'm sorry, I promise I won't make this speech again. May I respond? Mr. Mr. Jones. And I'm glad you said that, uh, Mr. Tower, because uh, that's exactly uh, what Mr. Wood and I are trying to do. We're trying to change the ordinance, and we haven't. We, we have met with the planning, with the city attorney's office and proposed an ordinance and so you're not the only one that's Good. trying to make some changes here and and but the the problem we have is all of these people investors are trying to get in under the wire before we actually get an ordinance that's going to be reasonable and applicable to this situation and uh, I, I appreciate your comments, but you're not the only one trying to solve it. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you, Mr. Okay, Mr. Moss and Mr. Rouse. It's interesting that when people comply with all the application due process, the people feel that they're entitled to something. But then when we don't have full compliance with due notification and having to sign on the property that's supposed to protect the public, that's a lesser consequence. So let me continue if I could. So here's a case where we say, well, four people saw it. Well, the sign isn't there just for four people. It's there for the general public who comes by there during the period. So who goes and says, who didn't show and who didn't come and who didn't come here tonight because they didn't see the sign? So you're, it's the, the sin of omission. How do the latent who didn't show because they didn't know? That's when you have like these federal due process. They have these long time requirements, public notice, the federal register. They don't, oops, you know, you can't shorten the process or change the fact because those are defective issues and you'll start over. So there is a defect. Now, our current policy says when this defect does occur, they sh it's not a basis for denial, but it is a basis for deferral because who's been denied notice? Not the applicant. The notice isn't there for the applicant. The notice is there for the public. So the public's been denied the knowledge to participate should they choose. Now, maybe they never would have showed up, but you can't talk about what didn't happen, but you can talk about the lack of notice. So in the end, the public is the one who's being denied the due process because they didn't get due notice. And so you just can't wash that away. And so I think at a minimum, it couldn't be approved tonight just because it hasn't met the threshold of the public's expectation of due process that they're entitled to. Mr. Rao. I think um, Mr. Tahan has stated that there was a sign on this property. The public was notified. Now what happened to that sign is anyone's guess. Um, so I think the public was notified of, um, of this. I think it's, it'd be becoming upon us to treat um, every last one of these short-term rentals on its own merits. Here we have someone, this is their principal address here. They are, are in compliance. They're not an investment property. Someone who's 
serving our country, and, and when they're not at home, they're trying to make extra money because it's not like our military pays well anyway. Um, and so I think it would be incumbent upon us to judge each one of these short-term rentals on its, on its own merits. It should stand on its own merits and not blanket uh, the whole short-term rental, the problems with short-term rentals within our city, whole um, blanket everyone or paint everyone with the same brush. Um, again, do, we don't want to disincentivize you know, people from coming for this council doing everything that we asked of them. Um, only to be given uh, a plow. No. And no, I don't think it's an entitlement. Um, you know, I, I see it as them being accountable um, and responsible and, and, quite frankly, someone that you, you will want um, to have a short-term rental if they're willing to come before this council and say, listen, I'm doing everything you've asked of me, um, you know, I, I like approval. Because, as we already stated before, we don't have enforcement. We lack the enforcement already, so if we decentivize it, People are going to stop coming for this council, only be told a no, um, which in return, which will we be losing tax dollars, um, um, losing tax dollars on the short term rentals. So I would move um, for approval of this this applicant. See anybody else? Is that a substitute motion? Yeah. Substitute motion for approval. Okay. Uh, okay. Can we get a second on that first, and then we'll have a continued discussion. Second. Okay, we got a motion and a second for a substitute motion for approval. Ms. Abbott? Yeah. Bobby, you said, um, I just want to get, I want to clarify because I, I thought I heard you say that staff told, that, told someone to take their sign down. Could you walk me through that again? Yes, ma'am. So we had a point in time when all the public hearings were uh, canceled and we had unknowns where we had the, uh, our staff was telling folks to pull the signs down because we didn't have dates on them because we didn't know when council would meet again to to hear them this one i don't know what happened to the sign i will be honest with you i don't need to check with staff to find out what happened i don't have an i don't have an answer or nor an excuse um so but, but it's possible that they were told they could take their sign down and then perhaps never instructed to put it back up it's possible and if that's the case that's on my staff and myself so i mean that's we we have re-notified everyone when we were coming back through the process and things were getting rescheduled that they had to repost the signs appropriately with the proper time frame. If it hasn't happened, then then that's on me. So. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Bellucci. Before we vote on the substitute motion, I just want to state that you know, it's been advanced that this applicant has done everything that was asked of them or everything that's required of an applicant. But that may not be true. And in fact, there's evidence that I have that I received this, this photo from the 14th of March, which demonstrates that it's likely that, it, that it, in fact, the, the applicant hasn't done anything that's asked of them. It's at least possible. So I think we should at least defer or um, or deny it. Certainly, I certainly don't think it's a fair statement to say that we can assuredly um, state with confidence that everything has been done the way that it was supposed to. And Ms. Henley. <clears throat> well, I think the fact that I have said that I can't support short-term rentals given the fact that I believe the ordinance that the City Council has developed to, to approve short-term rentals does not protect the health, safety, and welfare not only of the people who are using those short-term rentals for their vacations, but also in many cases their neighbors. And since my responsibility is to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens, I do not think that I am obligated to approve actions which I believe are a threat, particularly when I know that the city does not have the capability of overseeing these properly and enforcing even what is required, which I think is not safe. I believe overcrowding of these facilities is an unsafe situation, and I believe that they are not required to provide the health department regulations which would normally be required of vacation rentals in other instances, and the actual construction of the properties. And I will continue say as long as I believe this ordinance does not provide for the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens, that I am perfectly within my responsibility to say no. Hey, anybody else at this point? 
You know, if I could just make a comment myself, because once again, I think we as a council have a bit of a dilemma on our hand. And I agree with my uh, colleagues, Mr. Jones, Ms. Henley, and Mr. Moss, uh, you know, about their concerns. But the way I kind of look at it, you know, my own little focus group of one, we do have an ordinance in place that, it, you know, is in effect. And once again, it is, it needs some work. And I think, I believe that work is going to be uh, taken care of. And I guess my concern, you know, is uh, kind of echoes what Mr. Rouse says. You know, we have given people a path. And I, my guess is that a lot of these properties have been operating perhaps in a noncompliance for a long time. And then we ask them to come forward with an ordinance that is in effect and ask them to go through, jump through certain hoops to come into compliance. And they did so in good faith in trying to do that. And, you know, once again, a lot of these uh, situations have been held up for months due to our, uh, you know, reaction to the COVID going forward. So to me, it really comes down in fairness that a lot of folks have maybe have been doing this. There may be Airbnbs in neighborhoods that we're still not aware of and things of that nature. But, you know, once again, you know, I appreciate the concerns about what's going on. And the fact is we live in a resort community where a lot of people want to come here and vacation and do things. And the thing is, you know, the short-term rental industry is part of the DNA of, in, in, as part of what we do. You know, that is a large economic division uh, uh, engine in Sandbridge. But once again, trying to regulate and have the broad brush throughout the whole city is the challenge that we're going to be facing. So, but once again, to, you know, um, crystallize my concerns, we do have an ordinance in place and we do have people trying to come together to get into compliance that, you know, so that they are, will be pay paying their taxes. Heavens knows how many are out there, you know, where, you know, this is not being done. So I just wanted to explain, you know, why I've been going along with a majority of these things. So, okay. But right now we have a <coughs> substitute motion on the table for of approval okay any other comments okay all right we'll vote on the substitute uh, miss wilson mark is a substitute motion for approval or to uh, take a substitute motion i'm sorry can you rephrase the question can you tell us exactly what the substitute motion is for? The substitute motion is to approve. If there, if if the, if the motion to substitute passes, then there would be a second vote to actually approve the STR because that would now be the motion on the table. Okay. So it's not actually to approve; it's to. It's to accept that accept substitute motion, motion as, as the primary motion. Accept it as the primary. Right. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Council Member Henley? No. I'm sorry? No. Are Council Member Abbott? Okay, I'm sorry. Aye. Council Member Berlucci? No. Council Member Jones? No. Council Member Moss? No. Council Member Rouse? Aye. Council Member Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Nay. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? No. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of five to six, the motion failed. Okay. Okay, so then we go to the primary motion for denial. Yep, yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tower. Can I make a Substitute motion for deferral for one week. Okay, uh, what's the procedure on that, Mr. Stiles? Uh, substitute motion is entirely appropriate. Uh, and I don't mean to speak out of turn, but if the concern for the substitute motion is to address the notice issue, then a one week deferral would not resolve that because it would need to be 30 days. But I don't know if that was the intent. Uh, Mr. Towers motion. Thank, thank you for that advice. I'll, I'll, if I may reframe my motion, I'll make a motion to defer for 30 days. Okay, is there a second? 
Second. Okay, we have a substitute motion for a deferral for 30 days. Point of clarification. Yes. Um, for the city attorney, um, lack of notice is not a reason for the denial, correct? The failure to comply with the sign provision is not a basis under your code for denial, but it can be denied for other right. reasons on the record. Right. Yes. You. Okay, we have a substitute motion for uh, a 30 day deferral as a substitute. So. Councilmember Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Berlucci? No. Councilmember Henley? No. Councilmember Jones? No. Councilmember Moss? No. Councilmember Rouse? Aye. Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? No. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? No. Mayor Dyer? Aye. And by a vote of five to six, the motion failed. Okay, now we go back to the primary motion for uh, denial. Councilmember Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Bellucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Moss? Aye. Councilmember Rouse? <laughs> Councilmember Tower? No. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? No. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. And Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of eight to three, it has de it's been denied. Okay, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the request has been denied. Okay, moving on to item number J2, Cayman's Properties Rate Conditional Use Permit Short-Term Rentals at A5870 Northampton Boulevard and B5872 Northampton Boulevard, District 4, Mr. Jones. I have a question. Uh, Mr. Tahan. Yes, we do. I have a question for you. We have speakers. Yes, sir, Ms. Jones. Thank you. I noted in the record uh, that the parking for these two applications uh, involves the use of some public right-of-way. Is that correct? No, sir. The original proposal, uh, and potentially the applicant can speak to this as well, the original proposal showed that the public right-of-way would be utilized for parking uh, for the three-bedroom unit. Uh, staff told them that was not appropriate due to, the, due to the location on Northampton Boulevard, and the parking layout was changed to a pervious surface that allows for one parking space in the garage and two parking spaces uh, that come off to the side so that they can pull out appropriately to view traffic. Uh, so this is this parking plan here is what is uh, recommended by the Planning Commission. And how, what assurance do we have that they will actually carry that out? They are required to install their parking and utilize it as they've shown on their parking plan. That is part of what the approved conditions state. Um, it would have to be something that we would need to check into with our typical inspections. Uh, but uh, logically, someone should park this way if the parking is laid out in this fashion uh, because of the, the traffic and the uh, speed on Northampton Boulevard so that they can access. They have been using this as a short-term rental up to now, is that correct? Uh, our records show that they are advertised uh, and they are registered as per the per the record that they have, but we have no complaints. So I'm I'm not aware of them actually operating this time. Maybe the applicant can speak to that. This is part of the of the residential community that remains of uh, Burton Station. Uh, One of the concerns that I have is, well, I have two concerns. I have the concern of this parking that they have that obviously they've been using 
part of the public right of way for the parking and the use of these is short term rentals and without permit as far as I know uh, that's the first concern I have and the second concern I have is, is this thing this issue that we constantly have over the years with the residents of Burton Station itself and that the complaint is con constantly comes to us historically that we're doing everything we can to drive the residents of Burton Station out of there and it goes like it or not to the issue of race and I don't want to be a party to doing anything that's going to perpetuate that issue this is still a part of the existing residential part of Burton Station in order for these people to legally use this property for short-term rentals they're going to have to make these changes they haven't done it yet and they've been renting it out as short-term rental knowing I assume that they were parking on public right-of-way the third issue is the issue that you stated in your recommendation as far as uh, the access out onto Northampton Boulevard and that is that the public would would have to be backing out onto uh, Northampton Boulevard right now and apparently that's what they've been doing and uh, it just seems to me that there's too many reasons why we should not be approving this uh, and my I have another question is I don't know who Camus properties are are they an investment firm or what are they I'm, you know? I'm not aware of what their main business uh, maybe you can ask the applicant sir I, I believe the applicant is, is the applicant here the applicant is uh, going to participate via WebEx. We have two speakers. You do? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's hear them. Are they online? Is this Helen J. Gordon or is this Burton State? This is Burton State. Sure the no. Rajiv Giuliana, the applicant, if you could wait three seconds before responding and then you can start your comments, please. I'd like to thank the city council for giving me the opportunity to speak on this uh, short term zoning for uh, 5870 and 5872 Northampton Boulevard. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to consider the matter. Um, my name is Ranjeev Guliani and I'm the president of Camus Property and we're a locally owned and managed uh, uh, real estate investment company here in Virginia Beach. Um, so we've been in business here um, uh, five or six years in the real estate investment. I've grown up in this area and, and lived here most of my life. Um, a little history on this property, I think, will give you some context. Um, we purchased this property in uh, mid to late 2018. Um, the home uh, was a duplex, obviously, when we purchased it, and it had uh, two long-term rentals in there. And honestly, this property was in a complete state of disrepair. And I know there's, I've listened to some of these other um, short-term rental discussions about neighbors, and in this case, the neighbors uh, were the ones totally complaining about uh, the existing. Uh, uh, rental here because of uh, what was going on and noise complaints and about this unit and we came in and we invested a significant amount of money to redo uh, this place the siding the roof the kitchens everything uh, bringing this uh, this this duplex back to life really um, and if the pictures you see now of this place are significantly different than what you would have seen uh, a couple of years ago before we owned it um, we have a local property manager that oversees this property. Uh, they're there multiple times every week, uh, and they're meeting, you know, to meet, make sure they meet our quality, uh, our stringent quality standards. And we do not allow parties, events of any kind. Uh, we've got relationships with the neighbors. We meet them every time we're out there. 
and uh, we ensure that any issues are handled kind of a, promptly and, and professionally. Um, I certainly recognize um, uh, the parking issue that was brought up by planning, and we agreed to the condition that they uh, that they requested uh, to have a turnout where uh, they could be driving, uh, uh, you know, forward on a Northampton versus back. But uh, you know, from a community perspective, uh, the neighbors are very happy with the changes versus what's what's kind of this place was before. Uh, and uh, you know, we can operate this safely, effectively uh, in this area. I mean, this, as you know, there's commercial all around this area, and this is not a you know, at least this particular area where Northampton is is not a traditional uh, neighborhood that uh, you might you know that you might think a cul-de-sac. This is a very different type of layout. Uh, on this side of the street in terms of how the houses are laid out. And uh, I feel like that th this utility uh, fits in with uh, with the kind of uh, the nature of that area. And uh, we've been working with the planning commission for the last four or five months to get this approved, kind of gone through the entire process, met all the requests and standards we've gone through. So I appreciate you taking the time to consider the application. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Next speaker is Barbara Messner. Good evening. Um, can anybody turn the mic up a little louder? Mr. Berlucci wasn't even near his microphone, and sometimes when you all talk low like Mr. Jones, I really want to hear you, but it, it's really hard even when it's, you know, not that many people here. Um, I'm beyond disappointed in the fact that Mr. Tahan is never uh, prepared. He doesn't even answer how those four people knew. They probably were adjacent properties that were notified by mail, which is another thing that Mr. Moss brought up. And Mr. Tahan is outsourcing uh, work to third parties. I think one of the easiest remedies is not to let the tenants, you know, like this one, you know, move the sign around so people can't see it. And um, just like the brewery that went in at Oceana Crossings, um, you know, they didn't meet all their requirements. And, you know, zoning, some of the people at planning are great, but I think it's ridiculous that y'all have to ask these questions and that Mr. Tahan, you know, says he doesn't know. It's his job to know everything about these properties and take pictures. You know, he or his staff should take pictures. Maybe there's too many and he can't keep up. So if you don't have proper information, you shouldn't be pushing these through. And. As far as the Burton Station people, I think it was 2017 when they were trying to fight one of those mixed-use properties. There were a lot of people here, and that's a historic neighborhood. And um, I just think these investment firms that are buying things to, to fix up, you know, if they don't want to live there, fine. But, you know, they shouldn't be buying and... You know, we used to have neighborhood preservation. I think Andy Friedman's still here after, what, 30, 40 decades? Um, if there's problems with properties being in disarray, they should be fined. People should be going out and checking on the properties. Uh, you shouldn't let people buy them cheap and then try to fix them up. And as far as the revenue, um, you know, give the people their money back. Don't charge them an arm and a leg for these permits. It's it's a money-making scheme. Um, yeah. You know, and as far as the, um, Mr. Tahan was talking about the expense and sending out postcards. Don't put personal information on postcards, and he should be bringing at least, um, Barry Frankenfield very had, had proof of everything that was done. And I would appreciate right. no votes from the mayor. Yeah, uh, Mr. I, mayor. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mr. I, I have to respond. <laughs> Mr. Tahan has answered every question that I've asked him. Yeah. He's, he's uh, his, the record that he has on the application addresses all of the issues 
It's not a question of him not being prepared or anything like that. He's done it. He, every time I ever ask him a question, he's readily, readily had the answers. And so I just want to make it clear that any motion that I make on any of these applications has nothing to do with the responsible job that Mr. Tatan performs for the city. It has nothing to do with that. I'm very uh, uh, respectful of and fond of Mr. Tahan, and I think he, he does an outstanding job for us. So. Can, can I follow yeah, up on that, too? Please. Because I, I have to say something. Yeah, me too. You know, I, I, I completely agree with what, what Mr. Jones said. It's just the, the attack on Mr. Tahan is completely unwarranted, and I, I certainly um, I, I think it's completely inaccurate, it's completely off base. And, and, and I, I just, I think it's horrible. And the other thing, frankly, there's a, amongst all the other inaccurate information, um, the city does not make money on conditional use permit process, uh, at fees. I mean, specifically these, with all of the staff time that go into these things, you know, we, we should probably be charging 10 times what the amount is. I mean, frankly, in order, in order to get to, to break even. So, so honestly, that, that, that part is it, but, but, you know, Mr. Tom, I think you do a great job. And I was going to speak uh, along the same line. Let me put it this way. We respect everybody's opinion. But once again, we, when we make the appeal, when we say to strive for civility and respect, and when we attack somebody inappropriately at times, it, it really doesn't help getting one's message across. And if you realize the volume of work our planning department has to come with numerous, literally hundreds of planning items, not just the ones being, you know, demonstrated tonight or over the next couple of weeks, but the ones that are in the mix now. And when you think about the volume of work and everything, sometimes the micro details just aren't fingertip right now. But once again, I just make the appeal. You know, everybody has the right to be heard, but you, you get far more, more sway and leverage when you treat people with respect and dignity that we try to give also. So, Mr. Tahan, multiple kudos for your end department. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, having cleared that up, uh, I would like to make, make a motion to deny these applications for the reasons that I stated. Uh, uh, I appreciate the fact that the property owner picks the property up. I think that's great. He was renting it uh, on a long-term basis. He can continue to rent it on a long-term basis. But to turn it into a short-term rental or a business proposition there where it's still residential and a part of the Burton Station community I can't support that, so I'm going to move to deny. Okay, do we have a second? Motion for denial, and is, do we have a second? Second, second by Ms. Henley. Mm -hmm. Discussion, okay, we're going to go Mr. Bellucci and then Mr. Rowe. I don't have a point of discussion. I just want to pick, make a point since it was uh, brought up by uh, someone here and as well a couple of people who are watching at home. My microphone does not appear to be working. People are having trouble hearing me at home and here, so I just want to make that note hopefully we can get it squared away for next time but my apologies for anyone who can't hear okay mr Rouse. thank you mr mayor um just for a point of distinction between the two i am going to vote no on this um, because it is an investment property it is a business who's trying to um, really um, set up shop in our communities and i think preservation of our communities of of the highest priority um, but i just want to make the distinction between this and the last item or we have principal owners who just may be out of town on vacation, want to make a little extra cash on their place. Um, I think there's nothing wrong with that, especially when they, um, you know, they, they dot every I and cross every T according to the ordinance. But what I have a problem with is um, investment firms or um, businesses coming into um, communities where they might be dilapidated buildings or, or just in bad shape or just finding these properties, trying to fix them up and, um, and make a quick buck that's that's what i have an issue with um so i'll be voting no on this as well thank you okay Ms. thank you bobby i have a 
question about the software. Sorry. Um, you mentioned that the software is able to show us if the listings are being actively advertised. Do we, for the platforms that utilize um, rate a rating system, are we able to see if there are star ratings or if the host has been graded in any way? It actually captures the postings when, while they can, and it does provide us the, the rating at that moment. So if the they're company. rating, it's safe to assume they have, if they have a star rating, then they've rented before. Um, yeah, yes, that okay, would make so sense. So we can, we can grab that information and make, and, and basically deduce that they have been renting out of compliance. I have in this. No, I'm not talking about this one specifically. Okay. I'm talking about generally. Yes, and, and typically, is, if you are listing it, and, and as we have utilized the the information that we have, as as if you're listing it, uh, and that would be in a way that again we won't know once it gets booked, and that you're you're mm -hmm. automatically always listing it. Uh, it. It essentially is your op. You are attempting to operate without zoning approval. So, uh, it's that's how we we reviewing it and as we're able to make contact with people when we see it now again we're we're just at the tip of the iceberg of this with the software as we're working through it but we're able to at least have this information available for these applications. for future applications can we get a copy of the screen grab you're able to get when you see the advertisement it's or are you guys will, just get a summary we, we get a link and it's embedded and it's not as easy to to pull out the information okay. but we'll see what we were able to provide i just would be interested in knowing Especially, and you're collecting from, it collects from several platforms, not just Airbnb and HomeShare and. That is correct. It pulls from several platforms. Okay. I would, at a future date, and not specific to this applicant, I would love to get, I'd love to come in and see how the software works, number one, but I would love more information about what all the information I realize you guys are still learning. To my peers, I'm, I'm going to share, I've had a number of individuals reach out to me about this application as well, and I share similar concerns as uh, Councilman Jones and Councilman Rouse, and I, I, I plan to vote no on this application as well. Okay. Anybody else at this point? All right. We have a motion on the table with a second to deny. Okay. Okay. So we proceed. Councilmember Abbott? Aye. Aye to deny. Aye Councilmember Berlucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Moss? Aye. Councilmember Rouse? Aye. Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Aye. Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a motion of 11 to 0, the application has been denied. Okay, and the final, the final item is uh, J3, Leonard Lyon, Ray Conditional Use Permit, Short-Term Rentals at A, 8709 Atlantic Avenue, and B, 116 86th Street, Lynn Haven, Mr. Wood. Mayor, we have three speakers, if you want to hear the speakers. Yes. Okay, welcome. Barry, Billy Garrington. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Mayor, my Vice Mayor, Mr. Wood. Members of the, of the City Council, for the record, Billy Garrington on behalf of the applicant. Property known as 8709 Atlantic Avenue, 116 88th Street. I'd like to let you know our disclosure statement is current. All of our fees have been paid, and unlike some of the other cases that you have just heard, our signs have been posted prominently from day one. They were taken down twice by myself. They were put back up when we were instructed to do so, and they have been up continuously uh, in connection in conjunction for this hearing that you have in front of you tonight so the request that you have was for two short-term rentals 8709 Atlantic Avenue and 116 88th Street we have told your staff earlier today that we want to remove 8709 completely so that the request that you have tonight is only for 112 86th Street by removing 8709 Atlantic Avenue we now have the ability to have all of our parking on site, which the ordinance requires. If we included 8709, we would have several of our parking spaces that would be in the city right of way. But I got to tell you, I think this parking has been in the city right of way for this duplex for many years since it was built in 1940. Uh, and I don't think you had any requirements back then as to having to have parking on your on site. 
<clears throat> but we have taken 8709 completely out of it, so we only require two on-site parking spaces. We have room enough to do that completely on-site, and we won't be parking in the city right away anymore. We were at the Planning Commission back in March of this year, and it was recommended for approval by 8-2 to two vote. There was no other speakers there, but there was someone who wrote a letter in opposition to the Planning Commission. But it was recommended for approval by the Planning Commission with the staff comments that you have in your package, and we are in agreement with those conditions. I would like to point out, if you could go back to that last picture, one issue that we have is just to the right of where you see that truck parked at, there is a, there you go, that unauthorized parking area that was put in on this piece of property while the property was under construction and being remodeled shouldn't have been there shouldn't be there now it's unauthorized it's in the city right away we have told the planning commission that that will be removed and it will be restored to its original condition and i'm here to tell this this board tonight the same thing that parking area is going to come out and it's going to be restored back to its, its original area it shouldn't be there and i apologize that it is there so in your staff write-up there are 17 conditions that were placed upon this when we we're at the planning commission we're in agreement with those conditions. The conditions for both un both applications were the same, and we have taken 8709 completely out of the mix, and it's now just 116 88th Street. Okay, Mr. Wood has a question. Okay, well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that because when I looked at this, that 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 had gave me great concern. Shouldn't be uh, there. It, was, it, it happened while it was under construction. Okay. And let me also point out, Mr. Lyons is a permanent resident of the city of Virginia Beach. This isn't somebody that's from the outside of the okay. area. Okay. Um, there, there was an additional condition that y'all had removed. Did you? Does there was one condition that we asked to be removed. I could never have, have never found out if it was removed or not. And that condition was, Mr. Wood, if you look at the... Uh, I'm looking at it, yeah. Yeah, the condition number three on ours. that said about the, the uh, vacation of the interior lot line. Yeah, I, mean, I don't see a reason for that unless it's going to be reno uh, re uh, rebuilt. If it was going to be rebuilt, we knew we would have to do that because you can't build over a property line. Okay. That was the point I brought up at the Planning Commission. All right, so then... Can you go back to one of the street images that shows 116? Well, that, that's good. So how wide is your driveway there? That's, that's yeah, that what you're looking at there, Mr. Wood, is still in the city right away. Our parking will be put up here in the front of this unit, which will be completely on site, and you'll have two 9 by 18 parking spaces, so which is the, what's required. Two, and, but this is a one bedroom and one six. That's correct. So you only need one space. But we're going to do two. Any other questions? Ms. Abbott. What will, um, for the unit that you're not asking for the short term for, what is that unit's primary use going to be? It's, it's a duplex. It'll, it'll still be for a duplex. It's just the only part that will be available for short term rentals is the small section to the east, the, not the front section. The sec, so the, the bigger unit will be a long term rental? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And is there currently a tenant there? No, ma'am. Thank you. Hey, any other questions? There is one other speaker in the audience, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Okay. The next speaker is WebEx, uh, Dr. Carol Ashman. If you can wait three seconds before starting and then go ahead and speak. Hello, my name is Dr. Carol Ashman and I own and live full-time with my family at 209 B88th Street. And we also own 207 88th Street. I'm here to urge you to deny the short-term rental permit requested by Mr. Lyon for numerous reasons. One, increased traffic in cars parked on 88th Street in Atlantic from renters and their guests increases congestion and makes it difficult for residents and their visitors to park since there's already a lack of parking places on the street. He's apparently now asking for a permit for a two bedroom unit at up to three guests per bedroom. This would add up to six additional cars to this property and they can't all park on the property itself. This in addition to the cars owned by the occupants of the other unit on the property. Increased cars at this property limit visibility of motorists at the intersection of 88th and Atlantic and pose a hazard to pedestrians and children in an area that is already congested. 88th Street is filled with cars during the summer, particularly on weekends. Having to accommodate six or more additional cars for Mr. Lyons' renters is just not feasible on property built originally as a single family home. Second, 
noise from parties, blaring music, fireworks, and barking dogs. Short-term renters have no connection with the surrounding community and no incentive to abide by community norms. Residents are harmed by the resultant commotion and sleep disruption. Three, the detrimental impact of drunkenness, fighting drugs, and other bad and potentially illegal behaviors by vacation renters on children and adult residents of the neighborhood. Rowdy fraternity-style parties have no place in this area. Four, increased trash and broken glass, posing an eyesore and a safety hazard, attracting vermin and creating the potential for injuries. This is already a problem at 8800 Atlantic. Five, the hollowing out of the neighborhood and destruction of its character and sense of community. As more and more homes are converted to short-term rentals, the street becomes filled with a revolving group of strangers in the summer and largely vacant the rest of the year, obliterating resident camaraderie and cohesion. There will be fewer children to play with in the neighborhood and parents will not want to purchase homes here. Additionally, decreased year-round residents keeping watch makes the area more attractive to criminals. These problems will have a devastating impact on the neighborhood and result in decreased home values. We paid a premium on our home here because we wanted to live in a family-friendly and peaceful environment, not a commercial district. We have a right to the quiet enjoyment of the premises. I've served my country too by providing free medical care for the indigent over a 30 year career. I have a right to enjoy the quiet, peaceful atmosphere on my property. Short-term rental conversions are in effect a rezoning. The zoning can't be changed now without any legal process allowing some owner. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Last speaker, Mayor, is Ms. Mesner. Wow, that was an excellent speaker. I think I even know what that property is. And Mr. Dyer, I don't like being chastised after I sit down. If you have any questions about what I say, have the common courtesy to say it to my face when I'm standing here. And my comments about, yeah, sure, Mr. Tahan gives you what you need, but I've asked before how many uh, rentals there are. And I think it's a reasonable request to say for him to know, you know, there aren't that many on the agenda today, to know how the people were notified. And I hope you will consider, you know, having the city put the signs up and take pictures and know that they stay in place. Uh, that woman made excellent points and um, like I said, I would, I would appreciate giving the same courtesy. There's people that screaming outside and have screamed inside, and you didn't say a word to them at open mic, but you say a word to me. I'm an adult female, and I, I respect, I show respect, but I call out things that I think are wrong, and that is my constitutional right. And of course, I oppose this, and I do have one question. If it says here on the agenda, Leonard Lyon, L-Y-O-N, but it's been referred to in plural by different people. And can I ask Mr. Tahan uh, what the last name is, if it's uh, Lyon or Lyons? You know, it's, uh, you know, Ms. Mesner. It, it you makes know, a huge difference. difference. Okay. okay. I, it no, he's listed, looking it, it. He's looking it up. Can I? You know, I didn't take three minutes. I'm just. At, he's looking it up, which I think is fair for me to. Okay. You know, find uh, out. Your speaker. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's looking no. it up. I mean, it's okay, on the agenda. You know, could you please sit down? Uh, okay. Please. Mr. Mayor, I can answer that question if you like. Okay. Could, uh, would you like to come up and rebut? The applicant's name is Leonard Lyon, L-Y-O-N. It's not Leonard Lyons, it's Leonard Lyon. Okay, so thank he you. Is the, he is the, the applicant in this case. Okay, do you have any uh, uh, comments on any of the, any rebuttal at all? No, sir, I think you all have a pretty, pretty accurate picture of what we have here, and I thank you for your time. It's been a long night for everybody, and I thank you for your consideration. Okay, thank you. Mr. Wood. Thank you for clarifying the spelling of the person's last name. Um, and I, I got to say, I, I, I appreciate the the update on this one because I had 
real concern with it after I saw that that parking space that it had been carved out there and, and I like the fact that you've um, moved everything onto it and and quite frankly it's a traditional location for STRs it's gone down to one bedroom so there's you know it's got space for for two cars it really only needs one and if it's one bedroom it is it's gonna be one car that, that's gonna go there I mean that, that's just that's just the way that's gonna be um, one thing I would like to ask staff to do and and it's a continuous thing that I've done as I drove when I, when I drove down 86th Street when I thought it was on 86th Street because it said 86th and 88th on here I, I noticed there are still quite a few um, encroachments on on those roads mr. Leahy and I know you kind of a short timer here but <laughs> but we really need to look at the encroachments there um, again there is there a lot of this parking is is marked no parking and uh, and then you have the situation with with these uh, with these encroachments so that that all said I'd move approval Second. okay we have a motion and a second any discussion okay we're no, I'm sorry ma'am uh, ma'am do you Yes, I would like to speak to this issue. Okay, because, you know. I don't have a card for it, but she. Yes, you don't, because I had to go back home and, and find Yeah, I'll tell you what, we do have a speaker policy that I should have asked that if okay. anybody else wanted to speak. You can Thank come you. forward. Thank you. I'm going to put this down. Could, could you give Good your evening. Name My name is Gail Matola. Are you hearing me okay? Uh, my name is Gail Matola. I live at 115 88th Street. I am diagonally across from the property in question. Um, as you know from documents that I have forwarded to you and to the Planning Commission, um, I do oppose the uh, short-term rental. This property has undergone uh, quite a uh, transition since it was first uh, applied for the uh, short-term rental. That was in December. At that time, as you see, both were uh, under consideration. However, 8709 is Atlantic is now under contract because Mr. Lyon has sold that. Essentially, what has happened is that the massive uh, injury to the community is somewhat thwarted by the fact that that is now <laughs> thank you that that is now uh, not a problem it remains however these facts the parking that you saw still remains Unfortunately, that was put in so that he could meet the requirements of the larger parcel that he was trying to do, the two units. Those have created obstruction of visibility in order to make a left-hand turn onto Atlantic Avenue. They remain. Three trees were taken down last week in order to meet apparent requirements that we do not have any knowledge of by uh, for that added um, parking. I think that the fact that this house has been sold that has created that need for the people who live will now live a family of five, two parents and three children, essentially uh, needed to have accurate parking space. So yes, the plan is, and this is what I hear, heard today when I met with Mr. Lyon myself. I wanted to make sure that we were going to have adequate care for the property and also for the people who were going to live there. Just the other day on, on uh, I talked with the potential owners, and essentially what I was told was this. My daughter asked me, who was that man that was outside my window? It was a person crossing the property to cut short the corner so he, they could go to the beach. This is not right. The communities 
as you have stated earlier, need to be protected. And short-term rentals, if they are going to do, must follow all of the requirements that are taken are needed. I would ask you to please put this particular application on table until further until we know that those items have been taken care of. Thank you very parking. much, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Wood. Okay, so just to clarify, Mr. Stiles, how do we separate this? Because one is, um, my motion is to approve the, the one bedroom and their motion is to withdraw the, the other one. I'm trying to see how this is. So it, JB is for 88th Street, for 11, I'm sorry, 116 88th Street, okay. which is yep. the one. All right, so. And the, the first one would be to withdraw. Okay, so Mr. Mayor, let me, let me modify my motion if I could. So I, I move to, um, I guess, accept the applicant's withdrawal on item A and do I get a second on that? Do we have a second on second. that first motion? Second. Okay. And then I guess we'll vote on that, and then I make the next one. Okay, then we're going to have to vote on that independently. Okay, so any other discussion on that? Okay, if we can call. Withdrawal on uh, item 3A. Uh, 3A, yes, ma'am. 3A for withdrawal. Okay. Motion to withdraw. Councilmember Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Berlucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Moss? Aye. Councilmember Rouse? Aye. Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By motion of 11, by vote of 11 to 0, you've uh, accepted withdrawal of the application. Hey, Mr. Mayor, I move approval for item 116 on the item at 116 88th Street for. The, uh, the reasons that I, I listed before. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, if we can call. Okay, Council Member Abbott? Aye. Council Member Berlucci? Aye. Council Member Henley? No. Council Member Jones? Aye. Council Member Moss? Nay. Council Member Rouse? Aye. Council Member Tower? Aye. Council Member Wilson? Aye. Council Member Wooten? I'm sorry, Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of nine, I'm sorry, um, nine to two, you've approved the application. Okay, uh, Mr. <clears throat> Vice Mayor, if we can uh, do the appointments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I nominate the following individuals to the Citizens Committee on Boards and Commission, Mr. Doug McLiberty. To the Community Organization Grant Review and Allocation Committee, Ellen Ellis, Demetria Lindsay, Andrea Nisman, and Virginia Roundtree. To the Development Authority, Michael Standing. To the Parks and Recreation Commission, Sharon Felton. To the Public, Public Libraries Board, Robert Hoffheimer and Robert Krebs. All the nominations, sir. Okay, that being said, that we can call the roll, please. Councilmember Abbott? Aye. Councilmember Berlucci? Aye. Councilmember Henley? Aye. Councilmember Jones? Aye. Councilmember Moss? Aye. Councilmember Rouse? Aye. Councilmember Tower? Aye. Councilmember Wilson? Aye. Councilmember Wooten? Aye. Vice Mayor Wood? Aye. Mayor Dyer? Aye. By a vote of 11 to 0, you've approved the appointments as read. Is there any unfinished business? Is there any new business? We stand adjourned. Thank you all very much.